it's only Manchester United who could struggle this much against Sheffield United. And let's be honest, I think all of us expected this to happen, especially after what happened with Coventry City. At the start of the game, till like 30 minutes, we had like 80% possession. We had like 12 shots. The Nacho had a couple of chances to score. Menu had a really good shot, which was saved. And yet, despite all of that, we considered first from Sheffield. And that too from an Onana mistake. Onana who had been playing pretty well in the last month or two. And yet, he did that bozo thing of giving a goal away. And then even after we equalized, just before halftime, we considered once more right after halftime. So it, it felt like another day where we would get mean, where we would get embarrassed by another lower team, which is basically a championship team when we went to one down. But thankfully, we won this game only because of a captain, Bruno Fernandes. So let's finally talk about Bruno Fernandes. Even in my previous videos, right? Numerous videos I've been talking about, like, Bruno has a very, very good ability. He's the closest player we have to a world-class player. And yet he has been performing below his standards, right? Because he was trying to do too much. He was trying to run all over the pitch. He was trying to put in tackles at left back. He was trying to put in tackles at right back. He was blocking shots right in front of the keeper. It felt like Bruno was trying to do everything which were other players' roles. He was trying to make up for the lack of quality in the team. But today, in this game, he stuck to his role in the midfield. He played as a midfielder only. And that showed his quality. That when Bruno does what Bruno is expected to do, he's one of the best players in the league. He had the most passes in the game, most crosses, most shots. Whatever you name it, he was at top of the game. But that's to be expected because it's against Sheffield. And yet, he was the only player who stepped up once again. He has been getting a lot of criticism, right? Even from me. But especially from the media and the other fans of other clubs. They were comparing Bruno to some lower league player. Like, Bruno is a worse player. Bruno complains a lot. Bruno is a rat. And yet, Bruno Fernandes has more goal involvements than De Bruyne, than Odegaard, suppose like Musiala, you name it. He is one of the best performing players, even when he has been playing below average for majority of the season. He scored a really good penalty. And let's talk about the penalty, right? It was a penalty. It might be pretty soft, but Rodri got a similar one against Hoyland in the Manchester Derby. So it's a penalty. What was weird about it is that when the foul happened, the goal had already happened. But for some reason, the referee called it back for a penalty. So what would have happened in the case Bruno had missed we would have missed out on a goal because the goal had already happened and yet the referee pulled it back for a penalty. That felt really weird to me. But the crazy thing about Bruno in this game was his left-footed shot. He was so far outside the box on his left foot and yet he delivered a top-notch goal. He didn't end it there. He even provided an assist to Hoyland. Two goals and an assist. If you have liked my videos so far, then I would really appreciate it. You can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of my community and to be notified of my future uploads. Now, it's not only really Bruno Fernandes who played well. Another player who has been stepping up in recent weeks is Harry Maguire. I think taking the captaincy off of Maguire has really helped him out. He's a different player now compared to the last few seasons. He looks to be more free. He looks to be more in command. Whether it's defensively, whether it's in passing. And even his goals. He has scored more goals this season than all of his last seasons combined. Two goals in two games. And it's not only his goal scoring capabilities. He was even passing really well. He was winning the ball out really well. So I'm really happy with how Maguire is playing right now. I don't know if Maguire stays at the club in summer because he is one of our most sellable assets. But at this point of time, I think even if we keep Maguire, we have to sell the others to make up for the money difference. But if Maguire stays, I won't be fully mad about it. Moving on, Elton Ag made a big decision of dropping Rashford fully, whether it's due to his injury, whether it's to like protect him from criticism or lack of form, anything. But Ganacho played really well in my opinion. Yes, he didn't score goals, right? He missed a lot of chances. Ganacho would have easily had a hat trick. But the thing is, Ganacho was a threat throughout the whole game. He didn't stop running, even though I think he's carrying an injury or a knock. He was constant threat. And not only a threat, he was crossing the ball. He was giving the ball to Ditello for overlaps, which Rashford never does. Even the Maguire goal was from a Ganacho cross, right? And a lot of times, instead of cutting in, he went outside on his left to take a shot or to cross the ball across the six-yard line. 
So Garnacho is a lot more complete of a player than Rashford right now. And it's not like Rashford was the only problem in this team, right? We would have won or lost this game even if Rashford was there. But the thing is, Rashford just seems lost on confidence. Like, he's not really enjoying his game right now. So I think dropping him from the team might be a really good idea for himself and for the club as well. The thing comes that when Rashford comes back on Saturday, does he walk straight back into the team? I don't think so. I think Rashford should be kept on the bench for the Burnley game as well. And to let Ganacho just try out one more time on the left. If you have been watching my previous videos, I've been talking about how Ten Hag is making a mistake in the Delo and Van Bissaka positions. I don't know why was he not switching Delo and Van Bissaka around. And he finally did it this game. And it showed the improvement at left back. Delo is very comfortable at right back or left back. And in this game, he stepped into, into the midfield so many times. Every day, he the ball, helped us to recycle the ball. He was doing really good overlaps. He was trying to... He even had a really good chance to score, but he messed it up. But the problem here is Van Bissaga. Even when he went back to his right-back position, he was still awful today. The second goal that we conceded was because of Van Bissaka. Because how slow he was in trying to close on that uh, cross, which led to the goal. Van Bissaka is in very, very poor form. And I wouldn't be surprised if we send him in the summer. Bissaka has been at fault for like in the last three or four games. He led to a penalty in Coventry, led to a penalty at Liverpool, led to a goal today. I think he did, there was one more time. Bissaka is making a lot of mistakes for a player who's supposed to be a senior pro. So he needs to improve his game if he wants to stay here. Now, coming on to the manager, I think Eriton had made some good changes to the lineup today. And the tactics he got right. He played Eriksen into the team because they because we knew Sheffield is just going to sit back and defend. So having Eriksen help us control the midfield for the first time in what seems like six or eight months. Eriksen, Menu, Fernandez, they all controlled the ball really well. Passing it around, keeping possession, distributing the ball well. Yes, Eriksen can't run and in the second half he faded away. But in the first half he was, he was pretty nice, I think. And it shows that this thing can be a possession-based football, but it depends on the personnel. Like let's say if we have Mount in place of Eriksen. And we have Ahmed in place of Anthony. We have Martinez in place of Casemiro. This team and Shaw at left back instead of Bissaga. This team would be able to control the game. Every game, just like we saw last season. But it comes out to the fact that we don't have this person right now. Even in this game, Anthony was bad. The problem with Anthony is that he is not an awful, awful player. But it's just that he doesn't have any attacking threat. What Anthony does well is tracking back and keeping the ball. But beyond that, he can't really pass the player. He can't put in good crosses. And every shot of him is either very easily saved or off target. So he's carrying zero threat currently. When Amad came on around 55 minutes, Amad didn't send the pitch on fire. But he was much better. He was more involved in the game. Even the second goal that we scored, it was because of a corner which Amad won. During the Saturday game, I would really like to see Ahmad start over Anthony because I think Ahmad is offering a lot more, not only in terms of keeping the ball, but also in an attacking threat. We finished the game with around 70% possession, 25 shots, you know, more than 10 on target, a lot of passes, a lot of pass accuracy. But we have to take it with a grain of salt that this is against Sheffield United, which is basically a championship team. And the worrying thing about that is, against two championship teams, Coventry and Sheffield, we have considered five goals. So there's a lot of improvement to be done. And we still don't know if we can carry this over the rest of the season. But another positive thing in this game was Hoyland finally got a goal. And I'm happy for him because I think he's been getting a lot of criticism unfairly. A lot of people keep blaming him that he's not playing well, he's not scoring goals, this, that. But he's 21 years old. He already has 14 goals in his first season in a team which doesn't create anything for the striker. If you put Hoyland into a Chelsea team, right, in place of Nicholas Jackson, Jackson has similar amount of goals, but Jackson has probably missed 30 chances more than Hoyland, and yet they have similar amount of goals. So that just shows that if you give service to Hoyland, he will give you the goals. Eriksen played a good ball to him in which he almost scored. Bruno played a ball to him in which he scored. 
So if you provide service to earn and key win score, that's what a striker does. You can't expect a striker to score goals when you don't create chances for him. Now moving on in, into the league, Crystal Palace defeating Newcastle was huge for us because now we have a three-point gap at sixth position. Champions League is already gone because fifth place won't get Champions League anymore. It has to be fourth. And there's a huge gap between us and Aston Villa already. So it's all about Europa League now. So having these three points buffer is really important. Because we have to play Arsenal at home. We have to play Newcastle at home. And we have to play Brighton away on the last day. So we have to win this game against Burnley coming up on Saturday. To just give us some breathing space between us and the 7th place for the Europa League. And then comes the craziest result of this game week. Everton defeating Liverpool at Goodison Park for the first time since 2010. And that too, for one of the last games at Goodison Park and for Klopp's farewell tour. So it's like, it almost seems like scripted because it's such a good story. One of the last few games at Goodison Park, Klopp's farewell tour, they haven't won since 2010 and yet all of these things happened. So it's just so good to see Klopp leaving in tears, right? So it's just really funny to see how their whole quadruple parade ended in two months. Knocked out of FA Cup by United, knocked out of Europa by Atlanta, and now knocked out of the title charge by Everton. Just really fun to see. Let me know in the comments on below whether you think that whether United can consistently play this position-based football and whether you would want Rashford to come back into the team straight away at Burnley on Saturday. And if you want to check out my reaction to the Coventry game and how frustrated I was, then you can click on the link right here. If you have made it so far into the video, then I would really appreciate it. If you can click on the like and subscribe button below. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you next time after the Burnley game. Goodbye.